Hello, it's Roger Hutchins, and welcome uh, to the program today. We're going to talk uh, today about some things that are very important, I think, to the heart of God, and therefore should be very important to our hearts as well. So, uh, but before we begin, as usual, I want to uh, take a moment, and I know um, uh, many times, sometimes people wonder, why don't we do this up front? I do it up front. Uh, because I want everybody listening to have the full benefits of what God is saying to us. So if you're listening today and you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ or you're unsure uh, of your relationship with God, I want to ask you to pray with us. We're going to pray with you and we're going to ask Jesus uh, to be your Savior, uh, your Lord and your Savior. Uh, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and that's, uh, that's available to you here today. So as we, uh, Cheryl, as we pray today, uh, we want to believe God that he's going to um, minister that to to everyone that's listening. And um, uh, while we pray, just just bow your head now or however you don't, there's no formula. There's no, uh, the only thing that's required is believe. So if you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, I want to pray for you. Father, let that one or or ever how many may be listening to this, uh, video today. I just thank you, Lord, that you give them opportunity to become a part of the family of God. Father, we thank you, Lord. Uh, that's so important because uh, as part of the family of God, uh, they become heirs of God, joint heirs with Christ, a part of a royal priesthood. And Father, in the name of Jesus, I just ask you, uh, God, that by your Spirit, God, that in those that are believing, maybe for the first time, that are saying, uh, I just want to surrender everything, all my life to you, God, and I want you to be my Lord and my Savior. And I ask you, Father, to do that right now in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Now, you're, if you did that, uh, I believe your life has changed. I believe there's great things ahead. Uh, there's many, 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 many benefits, and that's what uh, my prayer is every time we come on this uh, uh, video and every time we, we begin to do this program, Cheryl, I want the people of God to know what's provided for them. Uh, I think the world already knows that, that there are, are things we we can um, about two minutes of the of, of, of uh, the evening news will tell us how much uh, bad's going on in the world, but but uh, I want you to know Jesus came to do some special things for us. We're going to be talking about that. Uh, uh, I was praying and and as I began to pray about the uh, the broadcast for the week, I, I'm. I first thought I'm going to talk on the gifts of the Spirit. But Holy Spirit checked me and said, before you do that, and we may do that uh, in another session, maybe after we get through with this, uh, or at another time, another week. But uh, the Lord dealt with me, Cheryl, to, to talk about uh, love. And, you know, there's a lot of different concepts of love. There's, um, I think there's, uh, three, four, maybe five different uh, words for love, even in the Bible, uh, that talks about uh, the different levels of love. And I'm not prepared to go into all those definitions, but but I do know that the the highest form of love is the love of God, and that's what God wants to impart to us. God wants us to walk in that uh, love, and we're going to go to the scriptures in, in a few moments. Uh, and anyhow, greet the people before we start, Cheryl. Hi everybody, it's wonderful to be with you again and we trust that God will speak to each person wherever they're at, at whatever ever level of maturity. There's always something God has to say and even repetition is so good because the scripture said in different places when the apostles wrote, I put you in remembrance Amen. and we need those remembrances because Amen. Life gets busy and, and we forget things and sometimes we have conflicts and we have to come back to the basics and really the basic thing is love. Amen. Uh, well, starting out, Cheryl, I wanted to, I, I'd already got a lot of the other scriptures and I was studying, but then I thought, you know, the primary scripture, the thing I, I think as a, uh, a little boy in Sunday school, I learned John 3.16. and. Uh, you know, possibly even those that don't even go to church may have heard uh, John 3.16, but it begins out, For God so loved the world 
that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Now, we want to talk, I want to talk a little bit about that, uh, show and, and expand a little bit, because uh, many times we think uh, that that just says, uh, you know, it's talking about just us uh, getting saved and going to heaven. Uh, surely that's a good thing. <laughs> we we're, we're, uh, understand that um, heaven is there. But you know what? God, in that scripture, I see the last part of it says, uh, well, let me read the whole scripture again. For God so loved the world. So that's established. God, through God's and by God's love, uh, he began this process. For God so loved the world that, that he gave his only begotten son, Jesus, uh, that whosoever believeth in him, Jesus, should not perish but have everlasting life. There's a, there's a misconception, I think, in the church, uh, church world and even in the world in general uh, that, that um, uh, the only thing that, that uh, Jesus came to bring us was salvation. But, and there's also a misconception of when eternal life begins. If it's eternal, it has no beginning and it has no ending. It's already uh, in progress. So now God brought us into the eternal life program. Uh, that's uh, just to, to put it maybe in a way, but uh, God's, God's form of life is not a finite life, not a, not a limited linear time life. God's form of life uh, begins right now. And life, uh, I think you have some definitions there, don't you, Cheryl, of, of life and what, what it's talking about. Well, I want to say one thing. The word eternal and in many places the word everlasting, according to the Greek from Mr. Strong's concordance, is perpetual. Perpetual means constantly going. It doesn't stop. So it's not Amen. just a one-time thing of, as Roger said, getting to heaven. Um, there's nothing in this verse that even mentions heaven or salvation for that matter. But it does mention everlasting life. Amen. And the word life means vigor and vitality, but it also means the absolute fullness of life. Life real and genuine, a life that's active and vi vigorous and devoted to God. And true life will never, ever, ever be apart from God, the one true and living God, the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, there just won't ever be any other aspect of true life. It's not talking about happiness. It's talking about having something full, something that... Uh, makes a person fulfilled in their life. And it's not dependent on any other human being. It's not dependent on work or jobs or anything like that. It's totally dependent on God because God is life. Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. So this type of life that this scripture is talking about that stems out of the love of God is the God life, and it is possible. It is absolutely possible. Amen, Cheryl. I just uh, I've got jotted down on my notes here, uh, John ten ten, uh, and I, I just wanted to read it uh, straight forth here. Uh, in John ten ten, if you've been around church long and heard it preach much, uh, many people, most most people I've ever heard preach, uh, is usually. Uh, preaching and, and emphasizing the thief here. Uh, let, let me read it so you understand what I'm talking about. Uh, it says, The thief cometh not but for to steal, kill, and destroy. And uh, and destroy. And now Jesus talking, he says, that, And I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. So now, whenever we, we begin to talk about uh, the Word of God, uh, you know, uh, and looking at this, uh, surely we know the enemy. The enemy has come, the, 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 the devil. The, uh, I, I see the enemy here as, as a religious voices because it says a thief comes up uh, some other way. He tries to give you another, another way. Jesus is the only way of salvation. Uh, that being said, uh, Jesus came that we might have life. God doesn't want us 
uh, just uh, barely getting by every day or living in a, a, a atmosphere where we're in fear or where we're in uh, uh, doubt or, or whatever. He wants us to walk in the fullness of life. In other words, everything he's got, uh, his spirit, first of all, the, the thing... Mm, the thing I long for more than anything else is His presence, His Spirit abiding, excuse me, abiding and living in my heart and Him doing the work. Just like Jesus said that the Father lived in Him and did the work through Him. And the reason that has to happen is because you and I, we can't understand the love of God in our natural mind. We've got to have the flow of Jesus, the Holy Spirit, and, and, and the Father flowing in us. And if we have that uh, abiding and flowing in us, then we can begin to understand the love of God. You know, for, for years, um, I wanted somebody to love me, uh, you know, because I grew up in situations where I didn't feel like there was uh, love in the home and different things. And, and, uh, but, you know, the, there was a level of love, but not the level of, of God's love. But see, there's a longing in me, not a crying over, over what was in the past. There's a longing in me, and I, I feel it right now. Thank you, Jesus that the love of God uh, be manifest through us. As Jesus prayed and as, as dem he demonstrated in the earth that the love of God flow in us and through us that we can be everything that he can, wants us to be. Well, I really do feel like that it takes a revelation from God to us for us to understand that type of love because it's not natural to us as a carnal, sinful person before we know Christ, but um, it is a true love. It's a love that will stand any test, and it's a love that will stand through all of time and eternity. It's a forever thing. Yes. It's not just a temporary thing. It's not based on emotions or thoughts or things like that. It's something much deeper that goes into our heart or our spirit and it produces that life in us. Amen. Amen. You know, except for the, the love of God, the, the, I remember the day, actually the evening, whenever I really heard, uh, I was just a young boy, but I remember the day whenever uh, I heard about Jesus and about a God that loved me. And I remember asking Him to be a part of my life, asking Him as a child. Now, I maybe didn't say everything right or whatever, but asking Him to live in me, in my heart, in my spirit. And I remember the change. I remember, sure, there was a picture on the wall of um, that, I think, at the Garden of Gethsemane, and it probably didn't look anything like it, the original, uh, what really happened, but it was, it was a picture that I identified. That's the only thing in the house, you know, when I'd ask my mama, Mama, what's that? And she said, well, that's Jesus praying in the garden. And, uh, and I looked up at that picture, and as... Uh, that there began to be a light and I saw a light around it illuminating because Jesus was identifying himself with me and I feel this love of God now I want you to feel it I want you to reach out and let God do something special in your life because God desires to have a people that are one with Him, and we can't be one with Him outside of the love of God. So uh, Jesus brought a new way of thinking uh, about love into the earth. Uh, under the old covenant, uh, it was it was more of an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. Let's read uh, Matthew the fifth chapter, uh, beginning with verse forty-three. 
through about 45. Uh, ye, ye have heard it, say, uh, it have been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thy enemy. Now that's old covenant. You know, love those that, that do good to you. That's 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 called a, I think a, like an affilial love. If 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 somebody loves you, you love them back. Uh, you know, and says uh, that thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. Verse forty four says, but I say unto you. Now this comes under new covenant. We begin to see a a, a new. Uh, a new way of thinking that Jesus is bringing. Uh, but I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them that despitefully use you and persecute you. Now, you know, we don't want to focus on the persecution and the hate and all those things, but under the old covenant, that's why what they focused on. They didn't focus on the love of God. Under the old covenant, uh, th there was always conflict and wars and and uh, and those things. Uh, but I believe God God has come as we already read. He's come to give us life and to give it to us more abundantly. Life is not warfare and and all these things. In fact, when when we really look at spiritual warfare, it's not out uh, even cursing the devil and uh, people some people get out fighting the air and and uh, paul said i don't just fight uh, like i'm shadow boxing i'm uh, fighting the air uh, but he said the weapons of warfare are not carnal but they're mighty the pulling down of strongholds all we got to do is speak the word and the love of god in us begins to change the circumstance uh you know Cheryl, i believe uh, you know just preaching and I'm a preacher, and I love to preach. But just preaching uh, is is not uh, what's going to change the world. Preaching the truth in love, I believe, will change people's hearts. Uh, you know, whenever we understand that God desires to take our life and begin to fill it full of Himself, full of abundance full of life and prosperity uh, you know people are are uh, jesus did the prosperity didn't make jesus nervous uh, prosperity is uh having uh, having what you need but it's also having him and you know people are so uh, small-minded but you know i want to i want to bless this woman because i love her uh, I want to bless the children of God uh, and, and the family of God because I love you. And it's not my love, it's the love of God that wants to come to you and help you to get over those things that have held you back, over those times that have uh, given you, uh, uh, caused you not to stay on the path that God set you on. But I want to tell you something, there's something, there's a power about the love of God. Glory to God that will... Uh, empower you and cause you to be able to stand against all the wiles of the enemy. Let the let the thief come because uh, God has given us power. We're not standing with the thief. We're not listening to the thief. In fact, the scripture says, uh, my sheep, Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice and a stranger they will not follow. The, the thief can come and go right on through. I'm, I'm one of God's sheep. I ain't following no thief. Hallelujah. I'm following the voice of Cause what? I hear something in his voice that I don't hear uh, in the hiring. I don't hear in the people that are just uh, uh, that are just in a religious state. But thank God for the love of God that that He has uh, given unto us. Now, verse forty-five says that ye may be the excuse me the children of your Father. That's what it's a, that's what this is about that you may be the children of your father which is in heaven for he maketh his son to rise upon the evil and upon the good and sendeth rain on the just and the unjust. Now what what a mighty loving God we serve that he blesses uh, you know even people that are ignorantly living in through life that don't know the love of God, He still brings life and, and breath to them. 
Um, he's our loving Heavenly Father. You know, some people don't like this, but Cheryl and I like to call him Papa. We like to call him, uh, you know, the Scripture says, the, the scripture says uh, that, that uh, his spirit, there's a spirit crying out in us, Abba, Father, or Father, Daddy, Daddy. Uh, you know, because he is that personal. Thank you, Father. Amen. Sure, you got something? Well, I just hear somebody questioning things, mm. you know, and even I have heard some almost mocking saying, well, why do I need to change? There's nothing wrong with my life, or why do I need God in my life, or what, what, are we, what is this whole salvation thing? What do I need to be saved from? Well, we need to be saved from our selfishness from ourself, from our self-will, from everything that involves self, because self, being self-focused, is anti-love. It's all about me and forget you. And we need that change. Look at the earth. Look at the United States of America and all the situations, the, the murders and the rapes and you know this one trying to get power over that one and somebody squashing somebody so they can get ahead what's the point of all of that none of that is love that's all of the self realm trying to promote self but the end result even if you get to the top of the ladder there's no support up there you're going to fall off yeah if a wind comes along, you're going to fall off the top of the ladder. The only thing that is true and stable through everything is God and His love. And His love has extended to every single human being who ever has lived or ever will live. Amen. It never changes. But it's so great that even in our selfishness, he still sent Jesus Christ to yes, die on did. the cross Glory for us when we were so selfish and didn't give him a thought. Amen. You know, that's, uh, you know, that's not uh, accusatorial to anybody. We all were born in sin and shaped in iniquity. All, we all were born in need of a Savior. And, you know, it doesn't matter, uh, you know, what our status in life uh, you know, many times people let their status become a hindrance uh, to their relationship with God. Uh, you know, thank God for this, uh, for the salvation experience. You know, I, I believe, you know, know whenever I was a little boy and my uncle came into that house in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, and, and preached the gospel and I heard the gospel and became saved, I believe uh, from that moment forward my spirit was secure. My, my spirit was secure in Christ. But you know what? I've learned since that time. I'm, I'm uh, 69 years old now. Uh, so that's been quite a few years ago. Uh, but I've learned through that time uh, that, that what God wants to, me to have uh, is uh, an experience with Him right here. In the, somebody said it like this instead of the sweet by and by the nasty now and now we uh, right now is the time whenever we need a savior we need a re reality of jesus christ operating in our life now uh, thank god for for heaven but but you know uh, i need him now jesus even so come quickly lord jesus so um, we we need that experience in our life right now amen and uh, let, let's go to john the 13th chapter uh, two verses there, 34 and 35, uh, whenever Jesus is still talking, says, A new commandment I give you, that you love one another. Now, you know, most of the time whenever we talk about commandments, we, thought, we think about those uh, that were carved on stone that sometimes uh, you know been a great controversial in the United States over the past few decades about uh, the Ten Commandments on the courthouse lawn and stuff like that. But, uh, but, but, uh, if, if, I, if I could choose, I'd write this one on, on those stones and put it uh, in front of the courthouse. Uh, and it says, A new commandment I give you, that ye love one another, as I have loved you, that ye, that ye also love one another. Uh, verse 35 says, But this 
By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if you love one, if you have loved one to another. I made a, you know that that word to there jumped out at me as I was studying this, because uh, you know we, we say well you got you got you have to love me, uh, you know uh, because. God said you have to love me. Well, if you ha if you're doing it because you have to, uh, then there there's a problem. But the love one to another, there's something going. There's a love going between us, between us. That I feel it today. I feel it going going out as we do this video. I feel that God's love is going to you uh, because of what He has put in us. Uh, you have love one to another. So, uh, Shell, there's a. Do you understand what, the difference of what I'm saying? You know, uh, I love you. You know, I try to love everybody, but then the love of God begins to move through me, and there's a love that's beyond my ability to love. There's there's a love that keeps me wanting to touch your life, to cause you to be everything you can be in God. And I pray God stir that love in you right now. We're, we're about out of time, so I'm going to go ahead and let's begin to, to agree together that the love of God begin to be ministered to those that are listening on this, on this uh, broadcast today. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, God, that you touch the lives of those that are listening. God, somehow shed abroad and, and share your love with them, God. Father, I pray for the church, God, that we begin to enter into a place that the love of God is manifest in our life. And God, you begin to turn around uh, those times of uh, division and separation. And God, if we can do it in the church, I believe it can be spread and 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 shared in the uh, in the world, in the political arenas, in the the other places. And I pray, God, that all over the world, God, uh, whenever Your Spirit begins to move, God, it moves with this attribute of love. God, we are, according to to Peter, uh, God, we are partakers of Your divine nature. And God, we want the God kind of love that's part of your divine nature and in the name of Jesus right now uh, God in your name thank you father I sense uh, I sense a spirit of hate and a spirit of uh, 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 separation falling off of somebody right now as this word comes forth and, and the love of God begins to change your heart and life uh, even reconciliation with loved ones and those that have been separated uh, that God's going to give you the wisdom and the knowledge uh, to go to them and let God begin to change uh, your life uh, and begin to do mighty things. Father, I thank you, Lord. We rebuke the devourer. We rebuke that spirit of, of the lack of love and of those things to change the lives of those that are there. God, even healing and manifestations of your power because the word of God is being preached. Amen. Cheryl, you got something to say to end real quick? Well, I was just thinking about love one to another as opposed to love for one another. Amen. When you have love to one another, there's an expression in some way. You can lo Amen. have love for somebody Thank and they you, not Jesus. even be in your presence. But having love to another is there's some type of expression that comes forth that way. Amen. Amen. Thank you for watching the video. Uh, there'll be, as usual, uh, at least five on this same subject. And uh, uh, keep, keep looking back, and the next one will be uh, out soon. God bless you. We love you. Amen.